So, uh, and I'm trying to, as I uh, get hopefully a little bit better each week with the technology, I'm, I'm going to add, I'm going to try to add um, the module this week, that kind of checklist where you're going to have to um, at least open up the video from today before you can go on to the other parts of the module. And so it's, it's not really... Um, important for you to do it since you're here in person, but uh, you're going to have to do that. You can just uh, click on it, open it up, and then you can click right out of it. You don't have to watch it in its entirety, but it, at least it gives me some way of checking up on the people that are virtual today, and then especially the people that are online, because I, I have a hard time, I wonder sometimes if they're staying caught up in what they're doing. So it just gives me a way through Canvas to get some feedback there. So hopefully that feature will be on there today. We'll see. That's my goal. It's a technological goal for me today. So questions from the homework. Any you would like to see done or worked out? Clarified. Discussed. Any questions from before, not necessarily on the homework, something that you're not clear on or you would like more practice on? Okay, so uh, let's talk then about, we're going to do section 1.4 in our books, and this is formulas for uh, linear equations. And hopefully you have at least seen these, but uh, you may have varying levels of comfort with different ones. So uh, and we're going to try to uh, maybe expand and broaden what you've done in the past. Maybe you've already done this. So the first one is the one I think most people are most comfortable with, the slope-intercept form of a line. And that is the uh, y equals mx plus b form. And I think we know that the m is the slope and the b is the y-intercept. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about that just yet. We'll see it in some of the examples we do. The one that I am going to really try to push on you uh, is point slope form of a line. And uh, there's a reason for that. We, we do a lot of lines. So it looks like this. It can be either y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's kind of the classic way of giving it. Uh, sometimes you'll see it written where people will add the y1 to the other side, so you have y completely by itself. That's fine. Uh, either one is equally acceptable. I will in here usually use the first version. That's just the one that I have done forever, and it's the one that comes to my mind. But it doesn't make it any uh, better or worse than the other one. So in this uh, form of a line, the x1 and the y1 represent any point on the line. So we have uh, in the slope-intercept form that we see a point when x is 0, y is b. So the, the specific point that you need for point-slope form is the y-intercept. But on the point-slope form, it can be any point at all. And then the m is, as always, the slope. So the point being that... Uh, this is really quick and easy and doesn't uh, require any arithmetic if we are given a point on a slope. So for example, let me just do a quick example here. So suppose we uh, the directions were to find an equation of a line, an equation of a line through, we'll say, the point uh, 4, negative, I'm going to make it uh, maybe a little more, let me make it a little more challenging. For those that are insistent on slope-intercept on, uh, slope form, I'll try to make this really dreadful. So let's go maybe uh, 37 and uh, a negative 148, something nobody really wants to do on a slope-intercept form with the fine B. And I'm going to say the slope is going to be uh, I'll try to make it even more uh, awful, 11 uh, 19th. So that if you are really insistent on doing point slope form, uh, you just have to pay a steep price and all the arithmetic you have to do. So at any rate, what we're going to do, is all we want is an equation of a line. 
And this will come up a lot next year in AP Calculus because we're forever finding the equation of a tangent line or the equation of a normal line. And uh, in the AP world, they almost never care what form it's in. So you don't have to go to this form. We just want an equation of a line, and point-slope form certainly qualifies. So this is the x1, that is the y1, and that is the slope. So our point-slope form is just y, I'm going to go minus the y-coordinate, which so if the y-coordinate is negative, is going to make that plus 148. And that's going to equal the slope m, which we said was this terrible 11 19ths times the x minus the x-coordinate, which in our case is 37. And that's it. We're done. That is an equation of a line. So what I like about this, particularly in next year in, in AP Calculus, is when you take the AP exam, it is a timed, high-pressure, high-stakes test. And so part of what you want to do is be as efficient as possible. And if all we're looking for is an equation of a line, this is good. Notice we didn't do any arithmetic at all except for the minus the negative, which is pretty minor. But if you were going to try to make this into slope-intercept form, I think those of you that, have, that are kind of locked in on that now, you would have had to have done some pretty serious arithmetic with some really messy numbers, and your B is going to be absolutely miserable. And so what happens is when you do that, if that's your, always your go-to way of doing this, is you end up taking more time and... Uh, possibly introducing the very real uh, possibility of making an arithmetic mistake, which in the AP world means you're going to give away the point that you knew that you would have gotten just by writing it this way. So we'll do more of this down the road. So that's an idea. That's point-slope form. And then I'm going to talk about standard form. So that's our third form. And it's kind of ironic that standard form of a line isn't very standard. That is, uh, different books will... Uh, will ask you to do different forms for standard. You would think that one thing we could agree on as mathematicians is standard form is standard for everybody. But what we are going to go with is we want AX plus BY plus C equals zero. So we're going to put everything on one side of the equal sign and zero on the other. That's going to be our standard form. And the A, the B, and the C. So these coefficients that you see here are all going to be integers. That is, there's no fractions, no decimals allowed. And, and so if there are fractions or decimals, you're going to have to multiply through to clear them. And also that the, the leading coefficient, the coefficient of x, has to be positive. So when we can do all those things, all three things on the same side of the equal sign equal to zero, uh, no fractions or decimals, and the number in front of x is positive, that's what we're going to call standard form. So I'm going to give you some, we're going to do some examples here where you're going to start and we're going to work our way through this. We're going to first put it into uh, point slope form because that's the quickest and easiest. Then we're going to do some algebra to put it into slope intercept form. Then we'll do a little bit more algebra to put it into standard form. So you get familiar with the actual forms and you're also going to get the algebra practice. So let's see what we can do. Here. I'm going to give you... Let's say we have the point, uh, let's do 5, negative 2 is one point, and another point is going to be 5, 1. So those are two points, and we are going to find uh, an equation of the line containing the two given points in, and then I'm going to say uh, A, we're going to put it into point slope form, and B, after we've done that, we're going to put it into uh, slope intercept form, and then finally in part C, we're going to put it into standard form. Does that make sense, the idea here? So, how do we start? Exactly. So what we need for point slope form is a point, and we got two of them. And then we also need the slope, and that we're going to have to get from those two points. So our slope is going to be our difference quotient of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 
And it doesn't matter which one we pick as uh, y2 and which one is y1, we just got to be consistent. So I'm going to start with 1 minus the negative 2, but you can do it the other way as well. Since I picked this one, uh, I guess it can't really go wrong. I'm going to pick that one next, minus the 5. Good thing here, need not to heads. So our slope then, we're going to get in the numerator. Good, so positive 3 over negative 4, which we're going to all call just negative 3 fourths. Very good. Okay, so now we can pick either one as a point. And so this time I'm going to, I'm going to do both of them just so you can see it doesn't really matter. So for part A, we could use either of those points. And if I use the 5, negative 2, that's going to look like what? I was going to say 5, negative 2 is going to take us to which version of point slope? So what's that going to look like? Anybody? Somebody. Y. Y. Plus 2, good, is equal to? Negative 3 fourths. Good. X minus 5. Okay. So that would be correct for the first part, but you could have used the other point as well. Okay, and then you would have gotten the y minus 1 equals negative 3 fourths times x minus 1. So either of those would have worked. Is that okay? So next we're going to go to... Uh, Slope intercept form. So I'm gonna, I'll do it on each of them just so you can see we're going to get to the same answer. So these are both correct answers. You can start at either one of those points. You can, uh, you know, rise negative 3, run 4, and continue to generate points. It's the same line. But there's going to be only one version of slope intercept form. And so what I'm going to do is distribute this negative 3 force. I know this gets a little scary because we're going to have to uh, do a little arithmetic with fractions. So this is going to become y plus 2, negative 3 fourths times x is negative 3 fourths x. Negative 3 fourths times a negative 5 is going to be how much? Negative 15 fourths. Well, I think it should be positive, though, because negative times negative. Good. So it's, that's exactly right. Top times top, bottom times bottom. Okay, so you multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. That's going to be a plus 15 fourths. Now, there's no advantage. In fact, it's going to probably not work out great to make this into a mixed number. So I would just leave it as the 15 fourths. Now, we're not quite finished because now we have to bring the 2 to the other side. So when you subtract the 2 from the 15 fourths, what do we have to remember to do when we add and subtract fractions? You have to get common denominators. And so the 2 over 1 is going to become 4 over 2. Is that okay? Uh, not that. What would it be? 8 over 4 sounds better. And so the 15 force minus the 8 force is going to be 7 force, right? So we have y equals negative 3 force x plus 7 force. So remember, this came from this first version there. And my claim, I hope this works, is that we will get to the same slope intercept even, no matter which one of these we choose. Is that okay? So I'm going to pick this one. I'm just going to do a little quicker. So y minus 1, that's going to be a negative 3 fourths x. Negative 3 fourths times negative 1 will be a positive 3 fourths. We're going to add the 1 to the 3 fourths, getting a common denominator. That 1 will be 4 fourths. And so as we saw before, we'll still get to y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 7 fourths. So the point is, it doesn't make any difference which version you use of point slope form, you're going to get to the same. They're, they're equivalent. They're going to give you the same thing. Now, the last one is going to standard form. So uh, now what we want to do is th there's three things we have to do to meet these criteria. We have to get x and y and the number on the same side of the equal sign and zero on the other. So that means that's the first criteria. Then we're going to get rid of all the fractions. And at the same time, we're going to make sure the number in front of x is going to be positive. So we have a choice here. We can either move both of these to the left side to join y and make 0 on this side. Or we can move the y to the right side and put the 0 here. Any preference? Uh, the you want to put it on the same side with the y? Yeah, so the x is positive. Okay. So then you're, going to, then you're going to make the x positive at the same time. So we're going to add the 3 fourths x 
So that's going to become a positive 3 fourths x. The y is still sitting there. We're going to have to subtract the 7 fourths, and that's going to be equal to 0. So now we have two of the three criteria met. Everything is on one side of equal sign, 0 on the other. We made the coefficient of x positive because Aaron wanted to move that over to the left side. And now we've got to get rid of all the fractions. How are we going to do that? Exactly. So the 4 times 3 fourths will cancel the denominator. We'll just get 3x. The 4 times the y, there's nothing to cancel. So that's going to become a plus 4y. And the 4 times the 7 fourths will cancel the 4 in the denominator. We'll get a minus 7 equals 0. This is standard form. Okay. Now, of all these three, the only one that's really unique, where we're going to have to get exactly the same thing, is going to be slope-intercept. This is correct, but so would any other positive multiple of this. So it would still, maybe not as nice, to be like 6x plus 8y minus 14 equals 0, because it would be that common factor of 2 that you could divide out. But we got all three terms on the same side. The equal sign equals 0, no fractions, and the number in front of x is positive. Those are the three criteria. Make sense? Okay, I think we ought to do a practice problem. So, same three questions, A, B, and C. And this time, we will choose our point to be, let's say, uh, 2, negative 3, and let's say uh, negative 1, and 1. Okay. And others, uh, where are we at? First group up to the board, is that, or are we second group? I think we're first group, aren't we? First group back up to the board. Can we, let me just look, not put anybody on this board. Unless you, yeah, if you want to use that one, then I can, when I publish this, I can put it public. I don't know if that really matters or not. Good, I think we're getting, everybody's getting a slope of negative four-thirds. I like it when we agree. Point slope form first page, point slope form page. Oh, yeah, point slope. And I'm going to try to convert you to being a fan of point slope. That's one of my missions in this class to make that our go-to. Okay, we can see a couple of versions up there, which is good. This I like. So you can see Erin's got uh, her point slope. She used the point negative 1, 1. And I think uh, Misha used the uh, point 2, negative 3. So we have different versions of point slope form that are equivalent and still both correct. And then we should hopefully come to agreement when we get to the slope intercept form. It doesn't make any difference. Equally acceptable either way. And isn't that where it gets a little nerve-wracking? I know how some of you feel about 
arithmetic with fractions. So we're going to have to distribute and then move the other over to the other side. Is that all of you? Yep, that's good. Let's leave it up there though for a moment. Okay. So we can have because then people can compare. Colby, did you agree? Yeah. Okay. Okay, do we? Yeah. Okay. Jesse? Yeah. Katrina. No need to argue here. My favorite light impression. What's that? My favorite light. I know, exactly. And being a celebrity in the spotlight on the air. Seven-thirds over there for the y equals for the y intercept. Wait, is that supposed to be negative one? Mm, I think you're right there. Yeah. Let me check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are going to change our answer. So that's yeah. the We've got a mixture of flavor, but you're going to have to. So that's a plus three. So I think we're reaching consensus that the point slope one is going to be y equals negative four thirds x plus what do we have one third? Um, yeah. Negative one third. Negative one third. Yep. And then our standard form, we got four x plus three y plus one. Plus one. Yeah, it's positive. Plus zero. Okay. Good to go. All right. You can destroy the evidence. We'll look at a different example. I'm going to give you a function given as a table of values. And then we will ask some questions on that. So we are going to say this is velocity of something. So we're going to have time t, which is in seconds. And then we'll have the velocity v, which is in feet per second. And our times are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4 seconds. And our velocity at time 1 is 48. At time 2 is 16. At time 3, is a negative 16 and at time 4 is a negative 48. Feel free to jot that down in your notes. And I'm going to ask some questions here so uh, that we can talk about. Uh, first, uh, is V a linear function of T? And can you justify your answer? And then secondly, I'm going to ask you to just going to kind of take away the, uh, the mystery of that first question, because then I'm going to ask you to put it into, like we did before, the point slope form, and then slope intercept form, and then standard form. that make sense? All right. Second group, can you do that up at the board? 
consultation collaboration is uh, encouraged. Or you can come up here too if you want, if you feel, okay. however you want to do it. Oh, we have a visitor, you guys. We welcome visitors into our classroom by enthusiastically clapping for it. Thank you. We're still new with this. It's just uh, avoiding number one altogether. Is that our strategy here? Oh, no. no, no. <laughs> Colby, are we uh, avoiding number one? kind of goofed up there. There's not really any point to this, right? So let me change that. It's not a problem. Yeah, it is. Oh, no, it's a Oh, no, I think it is linear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So this is, yeah, this is clearly not an object thrown up in the air. Okay, so this might be something that's driving or riding a bike or uh, something like that. Man, did I really screw up my example that bad? <laughs> I sometimes even know too much. Right, if you get to use something, it's okay for the C to be negative, right? Yes, just the A has to be positive. No, because, no, because, no, because it's negative. Yeah, you have to take a negative. So I'm seeing I'm seeing good answers to number one. That yes, it's linear, and I'm seeing that people are saying the rates of change are constant, which is the correct answer. I just like to see a little evidence of that. So show me a couple of rates of change there, so that I can see that you have actually checked it. Like you can kind of see Katrina, I think back there is trying to show us how she's coming up with those rates of change. So some work that leads to that answer. So it's not just uh, um, you have some intuition on that. Okay, so it'll show up there on the camera. And the X's and Y's are fine. Yeah. 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 
So this is part A, and this is part B, and then I think when we add it back over, that'll be minus A, right? Yeah. So that's going to be part C. How are we doing okay? Yeah. We in agreement? Yeah. Okay, have you guys, everybody sitting down has compared their answers? Anybody not? So then you guys can destroy your evidence there and take a seat. We'll let the other couple finish up. Did you get it? Okay. So uh, let's talk, let's just refresh our memory about horizontal and vertical lines. These are kind of the outliers on this thing. So uh, what, what's an equation of a vertical line? Let's say uh, a vertical line through the point, uh, say, uh, 3, negative 2. What's an equation of a vertical line through the point 3, negative 2? Very good. Very good. So without drawing the graph, we should be able to do it. I was going to just illustrate that, but this is good. So I hope you can do it this way. So uh, vertical lines are always going to be x equals a number, and it's going to be x equals the x coordinate. So that's going to be x equals 3. You can see it. Just visual confirmation of that is that you know, here's the point 3, 0. And so a vertical line, every point on this curve has an x coordinate of 3. And the y coordinate can be anything at all. So in a vertical line, what is the slope and what is the y-intercept? Zero. The slope is zero. The slope is undefined. Yeah, this is the one where the slope is undefined. Yeah. And then right? there's only an x intercept which is x equals zero. Oh, excellent. So in this case, there isn't one. And you already anticipated my question, which I was going to say, uh, is there any vertical line that has a y-intercept? And the answer is x equals zero, right? And that one, what would its y-intercept be? All real numbers, yeah, because every point on the y-axis is a point of intersection, is a y-intercept. So I would say all real numbers. Is that okay? So how about uh, we'll look at a horizontal line. And let's say it's through the same point, 3, negative 2. So what's the equation of a horizontal line going to be? Yeah, it's going to be y equals, in this case, whatever the y coordinate is. So in this case, y equals negative 2. And so we would get, in this case, oh, almost missed that. That's going to be our horizontal line. And you can see here that every point on this line has y coordinate negative 2. And the x coordinate can be anything. There's no restriction on that. So in a horizontal line, what is the slope there? Zero. That's the one that's going to have slope 0. And what is its y-intercept? It's coordinate, or 0, whatever. Yeah. And we should, and let's just get in the habit a line or something I didn't do, well, there wasn't one there. So in general, it's going to be a point, so it should be given as an ordered pair. So I'm going to try to be picky on that because they're picky on that in EP. So if we just kind of learn it uh, right off the bat and get in the habit of writing a y-intercept as an ordered pair, then we're just going to be ahead of the game down the road. And so we talked about uh, parallel lines have what kind of slope? Parallel lines? Parallel, parallel lines have what kind of slopes? Oh, equivalent. They have the same slope. Yeah, have same slope, or equivalent, or equal. So I'll say same slope. And how about perpendicular lines? 
How do you say it? Yes, opposite reciprocals or negative reciprocals, I think however you wanted it. Let's say have slopes that are negative or negative reciprocals or opposite reciprocals. So let's see how we can use that. So I'm going to give you an example. And let's say, can you find an equation of a line? Perpendicular to the line 2x plus 3y equals 6 through the point negative 4 point. So before we bring people to the board to do this, let's talk strategy. So we have, this is our line, 2x plus 3y equals 6. Question or you got an idea? I have an idea. Okay, and so what's the idea? What's your strategy? Don't you switch x and y values? So you need to get inverted slope or some shit. Um, I wouldn't think to do it that way. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. Let me come back. To, you can maybe show me. Are you coming to the board on this one? Uh, no. Okay. Well, you can show me maybe on your paper. See if it works. Anybody else want to try articulating what a strategy would be? I, and I'm not sure that wouldn't work. I'm just not sure that it would. Colby? Would you put it in slope intercept form? So first put this in slope intercept form. And then where are we going to go from there? The point slope form. Okay, so we got a point and point slope form. What about the slope of this line compared to the slope of the line that's perpendicular? Um, yeah, that's going to be the negative reciprocal. So we're going to put this in slope intercept form so we can identify its slope. We'll take the negative reciprocal of that, and then we can just go right to point slope form, and then we're done because I didn't ask you to put it in any particular form. Is that what you're thinking, Paige? Or is it, I, know. Yeah. I don't know if your way is going to work or not. I'm curious. Okay, whose turn is it to come to the board? We're there. Yeah, I'm actually kind of curious. Why don't you do that? Um, kind of thinking of what works. So you have to get it open. Yeah. Yes. You Wait, would you, you make the? Would you make the two negatives? It's right there. Pardon me. Did you do the opposite reciprocal? The minus of doesn't matter. So this we don't really care about. That's just what we need to use. And um, yeah, okay. Now we're back to the beginning of this. So you down to the So there's your slope plus. I think that's a negative two thirds, right? Because you have to subtract. Oh yeah. Then so you have to make that positive. Then other than that, we're good to go. Is it okay? Katrina, how are we doing that? Okay. Okay, that's fair enough. So do we switch it and then put it in? Point then, point? then take this, and okay. all we take is the slope out of this. The take point. the negative reciprocal and use that point. So once we get to slope intercept on our given line, we're going to take this slope 
and our line, which is perpendicular, is going to be the negative reciprocal. Okay, now we'll take that slope together with this point, and we can just go to point slope form. And then we're done. You don't have to put it into slope intercept form or standard form or any of that. All done, be sure. I don't think that's going to work. Is that what you did there? Because mm -hmm. you had, yes, you just told us negative. Yeah. Okay, you checking on these guys, Misha? I'm leaving them in your hands. It's a lot of responsibility for one so young, I know. Yeah. Jesse, you okay? Yeah. Who's not excited about the blizzard? Oh, man. I, know. I wouldn't call it a blizzard. It's miserable. Can you believe it was like 90 on Saturday? Okay, I think we better do another one of these. So I'm going to say this time, similar but slightly different question. So we're going to find an equation of the line parallel to, and let's say uh, we have here, uh, let's go 3x minus uh, 4y equals 12 through the point, this time we'll say uh, uh, 9, negative 11. Okay? So parallel instead of perpendicular on this one. All right, others, come on up and give it a shot. So we're going to start the same. We still got to get the first given equation into slope intercept form. And then once we do that, this time what are we going to do? Uh, take the slope. Just take that slope, leave the rest of it behind, and then use the given point. Just check on Jesse and Katrina, make sure she's on the right track. Good to go. It's almost too easy, huh? <laughs> Where's the challenge? You can go ahead and race it. You see?
Okay. Go ahead and finish up the slide. So we're going to, oh man, we'll just have to come back to this one. Phase by the bell.